Hey what's up guys welcome to Stackify and in this channel you will get everything you need for your JEE preparation. So if you are new to this channel hit the subscribe button stay connected with me. So let's go. I guess most of you have seen this question in my community post if not I would suggest you to pause the video right here go through the question very quickly and uh, these are the four options that has been provided along with this question. If you have solved the question and uh, if you are getting the correct options as A, B, C, D or B, C, D or A, B, C or any other combination then I think most probably you are wrong. Okay. So why? For that you need to watch the whole video. So, so let's go to the solution. So before coming to the solution I would like to tell a few things about a radiative view factor. So what is a radiative view factor? Suppose uh, the definition tells us that a view factor F12 is the fraction of energy exiting from surface 1 that directly falls on surface 2. So if there is a surface 1 which is emitting some energy, of course the whole energy does not fall on the surface 2. A few fraction, I mean some fraction of the total energy falls on 2. So that fraction is F12. Similarly, if uh, some energy is being radiated by the surface 2, the whole energy does not fall on surface 1, right? Some fraction would fall. So that fraction would have been F21. Okay. Now, let us recall Stephen Boltzmann law. So, what does Stephen Boltzmann law tells us? Uh, here in the given diagram, I have considered two concentric spherical black bodies. At uh, equilibrium st state, the temperature of the first shell, inner shell is T1 and the outer shell is T2. So, the energy emitted by the shell 1 is of course per unit time. So, sigma T1 to the power 4 times the cross sectional area of the inner shell okay and there should be a negative feedback due to this outer shell so the resultant heat supplied by this inner shell should be its absolute i mean its actual emission subtracted by the negative emission due to this outer shell that would be sigma t2 to the power 4 4 pi b square times the factor which is actually falling, uh, I mean the factor which will tell us that the actual amount of energy falling on the shell 1, right? because all the energy from shell 2 won't fall on shell 1 because some amount will fall back on the shell number 2 itself. right? So for that we need the view factor here and the view factor will be written like this F21 means view factor for energy given out by shell 2 and it is falling on shell 1. Okay? So, F21 for concentric spheres is defined as the square ratio of the square of the inner radius and outer radius and from where did I get this one? Of course, there is a theory behind it and uh, I will not it would take a lot of time to prove this thing. Right? So, I will not uh, use this video for that. I might uh, give you some link or source from where you can get this information or you can just uh, uh, google it. You can google view factor and uh, get the relevant information. So, the net heat supplied or the if you have an instrument and which can measure the energy per unit time in this middle region, you will get the heat energy or the power emission something like this sigma 4 pi a square times t1 to the power 4 minus t2 to the power 4 just put this value in this equation okay so this is our final emission of energy right similarly for concentric cylinders these are two uh, concentric infinite length cylinders we are actually seeing the top view having inner radius a and outer radius b shell number 1 and sh cylinder number 2 the view factor for F21, I mean when you, the energy emitted by 2 won't, the whole energy won't fall on shell number 1. So in this case the view factor is inner radius by outer radius, Okay, just A by B. And remember for shell spherical spheres, it is A square by B square, fine, very nice. So let us come to our actual question. So this is the top view of the three concentric cylinders. So, actually this one is not a cylinder, this is actually a wire carrying current of I 
which is actually the main source of the power which is being emitted from this surface from this cylindrical surface and uh, which will also increase the temperature of this shell number B and in eventually it will also increase the temperature of shell number C. So, at equilibrium in the question they have said that the temperature of shell B is 400 Kelvin fine and of course, at equilibrium temperature if you measure the energy received per unit time at any point in between the wire or the cylinder A and cylinder B must be equal to the energy per unit time received at any point between cylinder B and cylinder C which should also be equal to the energy received at any point between cylinder C and the surrounding. I think that what equilibrium state signif sorry, signifies right. So, within A and B ok. So, what is the energy you will receive between A and B this region? Okay. It should be sigma T a to the power 4 2 pi r l that is the cross surface area of this cylinder a minus sigma T b to the power 4 2 by 8 r l times the view factor right times the view factor because view factor is important here right. So, in this case the view factor would be the inner radius divided by the outer radius ok. So, r divided by 8 r that is 1 by 8 just plug this value here you will get 2 pi r l sigma T a to the power 4 minus T b to the power 4. So, this is the energy that you will receive per unit time at any point in between cylinder a and b. Similarly, for b and c if you try to calculate the view factor would be 1 by 8 ok. So, energy emitted by the cylinder b minus energy emitted by the cylinder A and this factor must be multiplied. So, this is the total energy that is actually received by the cylinder B ok. So, calculating this one we get 16 pi R L sigma times T B to the power 4 minus T C to the power 4 fine and similarly for the C and surrounding there is I mean temperature of the surrounding is not given here. So, the only uh, thing that is happening is the emission of heat from the cylinder number C ok that would be sigma T C to the power 4 64 R L ok. Now, at equilibrium the energy emitted from A to B will be equal to B to C and will also be equal to C to surrounding. Now, just plug this value these three terms are equal which will help us to find out T A and T C ok. Let us take this equal to this one ok. So, from here you can calculate and find out that T C is equal to T B divided by 9 to the power 1 by 4. If you put the value of T B which is 400 Kelvin you will get near about 230.94 Kelvin ok. So, that leaves us with the option Mm, 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 mm. B as wrong, option B is wrong, right. So, let us come to our next option. Now, if we equate this equation along with this one, just calculate it, I will not take much of your time here. You will see that just put the value of T c of course, from the from this portion what you have received. So, just put the value you will get T a to the power 4 equals 73 by 9 T b to the power 4 put the value calculated you will receive that T a is equal to 675.04 Kelvin which is nowhere equal to the value that has been given in the option. So, option a is also wrong right. So, let us check the other option ratio of T b and T c as you can see the ratio of T b and T c is 9 to the power 1 by 4 which is nearly equals to 1.73 <laughs> wrong 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 wrong. So, this is also wrong option c is also wrong. So, let us check the last one for the last option of course, the energy per unit time that is being emitted by the cylinder a the main source is the current that is flowing through it. And the, uh, and the power created by that current is I square R which is also equal to the power emitted by that cylinder. 
So, I square R is rho L by cross sectional area equals this one. So, in the question they have already provided the value of this whole factor which is equal to 10 to the power minus 8 put the value of T A which we have got here. So, T A would be 675.04 or you can write uh, 675.04 oops sorry I did a mistake here it should be 675.04 whole to the power 4. So, let me calculate this portion after calculating everything uh, we get 64.44 ok just put the value of T A that you have got from here calculate it you will get 64.44. So, does it match with the option that has been provided in the question they have given 32 times root 2. So, 32 times root 2 is 45.64 which absolutely does not match with our answer. So, option D is also wrong ok. So, this is the final take of this question from my side your opinions are mostly welcome as you have seen the whole video and you have come to the end of the video. So, you will get a cookie and I will see in the next one take care peace.